Well, we got lots of wrestling to talk about. That'll make me happy. Uh, we certainly do. Well, would you like to delve into the SmackDown? I don't remember if I watched it. You did. You talked to me about it. It's just, it's, it's left our mind after the crown jewel. But uh, again, we're not going to go into play-by-play -play on any of the matches because they were just there to give you a chance to go up and get a, a sandwich or whatever in between the, the monologues or the dialogues. It's either a monologue or a dialogue. If one person is speaking, it's a monologue. If two more are speaking, it's a dialogue. But either way, they pretty much lay the same old log every Friday night, don't they? We get some stars that talk, and then they pesky, uh, they they pester us with these pesky wrestling matches in between. And this one was taped. Yes, because they had to fly over there to Saudi Arabia and create a spectacle over there. But it, 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 there was, it, it was made. The show was sold. There was nothing more to to be done in the way of angles or business or whatever. They just need to get the names out there. And apparently, you know, they they know now. Well, Fox is. Not going to be with us too much longer, so fuck them, I guess. <laughs> did you see the quote from Fox? Yes, I did. They basically said we weren't making any money doing this, so we dropped out. Yeah. And that's a cautionary tale. Yeah, that's the last thing you want a programming partner saying as you're negotiating a programming deal, like WWE is for other programs. But the thing is... It it's not because the WWE is not drawing viewers or making money itself. It's because these rights fees got so ridiculous for all these sports, right? That they can't forever just keep going up and up. Like the shit stain said one time, you know, he was delusional. So what happens when business goes down and he said, oh, if we do it right, it'll never go down. Well, it can't just keep continuing to go up and up and up or you reach a point where you're allegedly selling more tickets than there are people on the fucking planet. At some point, there needs to be a plateau and a valley. And and the other thing, too, is even though you see advertisers on the wrestling shows, even though podcasts like us have advertisers, even though there are wrestling fans in every company all over the world, there still is a weird prejudice against wrestling fans from advertisers as a whole. So, even though WWE SmackDown made the network happy with the amount of viewers they had, Fox being the network, they couldn't make money on that because they're not getting the same advertisers they would for, obviously, the NFL or yeah. anything else. It's unfair, too, because we know we've done enough surveys, we've seen who the audience is. There's a bit of everything, but there's a lot of people who educated, high-income uh, jobs. I mean, there's a range of people, and... It's like, at times, it feels like advertisers pretend that it's not there. Well, and with the ticket prices and the merchandise prices these days, if you go, you have to be a high-income earner uh, for any of these major companies. But I'm not sure about the high intelligence with some of them. But no, we, we do know. And, and it, here's another thing is our audience is made up of some people who are still interested in wrestling but many others who were interested in wrestling from a while back when it was good so they may not be being figured into maybe our audience is a little more higher achieving and a little more discerning than the modern wrestling audience these days nevertheless they started with the they were just hitting the the high points of what crown jewel was going to be they started with a recap package of la knight and roman and the bloodline and then sent L.A. Knight out to do a fucking promo and sell the goddamn match. And he does a promo like a wrestler. And he talked with confidence about his match with Roman. You know, it's going to be a hostile takeover and the fans are with him. And then here comes Roman. His music interrupts and the long entrance and the face off. And they go back and forth. We put Roman over a million times. He's great at this. He's belittling to L.A. Knight, but L.A. Knight got the fans behind him with the way he stood up to Roman. He was he was not intimidated. They were doing a wrestling promo back and forth to each other. And L.A. Knight stood up and had some balls to him, said, I'm, you know, I'm not here to finish anything. I'm here to start something. And they do the back and forth promo and then the referees get in between them before they can fight and they shove and trash talk a little bit. 
And it's it sold the pay per view, and both guys did a wonderful job, and I've got no complaint about it except. When it was over, we were 17 minutes into the show, and they said about fucking five minutes worth of shit. And that's the SmackDown way, isn't it? Yes. And that's... They're not doing a lot wrong, but God damn it takes them a while to do anything. And you know what? Maybe that's the right pace, as opposed to giving everyone nonstop everything, draw it out. There's obviously a reaction to this, so they're getting the results. Yeah, well, they're making the main points, and they're... They're getting it over because, as Gary Hart said famously, repetition is the key when dealing with goofs. And you don't want your main points to be confused and jumbled and hidden in a miasma of chaos like over on the other program. But goddamn, when we used to only have an hour, or in the case of Raw, we used to only have two hours, we could still get the goddamn point across and get some action in the program. Uh, but as speaking of action, Austin Theory against Kevin Owens. So I knew where this was going to go immediately because they've just, with great fanfare, brought Kevin against his will, kicking and screaming from his conjoined twin, Sammy, to be over here on his own on SmackDown. So, of course, he's going to beat Austin Theory. But look... <laughs> who says Vince McMahon is still in total control of the WWE? Look at Austin Theory next to Kevin Owens and tell me that 25 years ago that anybody would have even come to Vince McMahon with the idea of let's put that pale, flabby, fat, tattooed fuck over that goddamn Greek god-looking 20-something-year-old fucking kid we've just signed. But the indie-rific champion of the world did indeed prevail in this they went two minutes to the break they came back for maybe three minutes and owens beat him flat in the middle one two three with a fucking stunner but the standards of being a wwe superstar at least visually have changed can you imagine in the 80s if vince would have hired guys that looked physically like owens dick murdoch would have been the wwf champion no he would have put owens in a dress well, that's true, and and give him a blow away diet. Um, any comments on that contest, or should we move on? We should move on. We should move on. Bailey's bunch beat up Bianca Belair backstage. Did you catch that? The Bailey bunch. The Bailey bunch. They beat up Bianca Belair backstage. It was brutal. I saw the brutal Bailey bunch beat down backstage. And it was Claude Cooper, the kleptomaniac from <laughs> Cleveland, who copped the clean copper clappers left in the closet. Cleaning woman Clara Clifford sounded the alarm. Then Bobby Lashley, the Street Profits, and Logan Paul hugged each other. Then we had Chelsea and Piper against Shotzi and Charlotte, and the babyfaces won in under three minutes. And then we got back to the bloodline. So here comes Paul Lee and Solo to the ring. And Paul cut the fired-up promo on John Cena. How great he was and all that stuff, but he messed with the bloodline and he can't get away with that. And then Solo took the microphone and told Paul, said, don't waste time talking to these fans. I want to talk to John Cena face-to-face. -face. And then they play John Cena's music. It's amazing how this happens. Just... Uh, completely off the cuff and totally off the top of people's asses like this. And John Cena comes out. At least he's got his game face on. He didn't do his whole entrance. He was stoic. And I wrote, can he talk after the spike last week? Because remember, I said, after Paul had cut the promo, we're going to take away what's most important to you, Cena, your voice where you can't talk to the people and communicate with your fans. And he got spiked. I said, he better not talk. Well, they split the difference. He came out and he had a raspy voice. So at least they made the nod to it. Uh, Cena did not forget all of his Rip Rogers training. 
And they, you know, basically Solo said, I've got orders from the tribal chief and I'm going to give you a microphone so you can say goodbye while you still can because tomorrow you won't be able to. And Jonna, Jonna, John Cena comes back with the, the raspy voice, but he says goodbye for the fans to the Solo who got a job because of his cousin. He's nothing but a bargain basement Taz ripoff. Do you think anybody told John that Taz is working for AEW? Do you think anyone's going to tell John he can't say that? That's a thing. I'm not sure he knows. Hey, think about this. Does John Cena give a fuck what's going on in another company when he's doing movies and he's doing this and he's doing whatever the fuck he, and he's counting his millions of dollars? Probably not. He may have thought that he was doing a wwe old school reference anyway apparently john says he's gonna stick solo's thumb straight up his own ass there tomorrow and that's what's gonna happen to solo and he fucking left and they didn't get in a fight but they sold the match because there's to me on that crown jewel there was two matches that anybody gave a shit about roman reigns la night and Solo and Cena, and they've just sold both of them. We're, of course, better than an hour into the program, and we've seen two live interviews that are basically serving as advertising for the show that we're supposed to pay for or subscribe to something to see, but at least they were good interviews. What'd you think? I thought good interviews. I think they did a good job building up this match, this little feud, and it had to pay off and some sort of significant way, and it did. But unfortunately, now, before we can set up the next interview, we got to have a goddamn match. They had a Donnybrook match with no disqualification, lazy booking, between the Brawling Brutes and Purely Dreary. And the Brutes jump-started it in the aisle way. They had the ring and ringside set up with tables and beer mugs and beer barrels and knickknacks and patty wax. And obviously, I've invoked the purely dreary rule. I wouldn't watch anything they were involved in. Even if they were in my home movies, I would burn them. But for the finish, somebody went through a table. I know you're shocked. I know you're shocked, but that's what happened. Purely deadly, or if you went to AI and said, well done, this is what would happen. Oh, come on. Rex and Steve looked like goddamn... This is AI, Rex, Rex and Steve. Lex Luger and Arnold Schwarzenegger next to these two fucking... Well, we were an hour and a half into the program. So now we got Nick Aldis in the back with Paul Lee, and Paul complimented Nick Aldis's suit. It offered some pearls of wisdom. Have a lot of doctors on hand tomorrow for L.A. night. You're going to need them. And then we went to a backstage weigh-in. Because I will, there's another match that had some interest, Logan Paul, Rey Mysterio. And they had the backstage weigh-in. Apparently, they either thought this might go sideways or they just didn't have enough time. <laughs> so they put it in the back. And... It was allegedly in front of the press conference like, uh, you know, audience that you kind of see at the bottom of the screen, the camera shooting over them. But Brian, is it just, is it modern day or do journal, real journalists at press conferences take pictures with their phones now still? Is it, they don't have real cameras, even the professional well, journalists? A, well, that happens, but let's be honest. You have a camera on the phone that's pretty great. Well, but I, there, there's, it just doesn't look professional. It looks like a bunch of fans taking their own, if, if they're doing a press conference, wouldn't they have actual photographers with real cameras there on the scene to? Maybe. I mean, you don't need it. That's one of those things. Every time you hear like clicks nowadays, you're like, why? Like, why is that happening? It seems inappropriate. What do you want? Like a big flash? Well, that would be a little, poof, you know, <laughs> guy throws a fucking blanket over his head and, poof, and the phosphorus goes up. But anyway, so Logan Paul weighed in at 213 pounds. You could say 230 for him and people would believe it. And Ray weighed in at 175 and 
That's maybe he had rocks in his pocket. And they stepped in for the face-off, and Ray slapped Logan Paul, and Logan Paul punched a security guy, and they had to pull apart. And the funniest part of the whole thing was Ray Mysterio bopped Logan Paul on the head with the fucking handheld microphone. That happened at the press conference he had for that boxing match he just had. The guy threw the microphone at him. And oh, he did he? Bust, okay. And he busted him open, yeah. Well, then it would be even funnier if I'd have known that, but it was funny the way he did it. And that was the end of that. So... That was that. And then our main event came, Bianca versus Bailey. And you may remember that Bailey's bunch beat up Bianca Belair brutally backstage earlier in the evening. A beatdown. It was a beatdown beyond compare. So I wrote main event question mark. No wonder Fox dropped the show. Whatever the finish was, Bianca gave Bailey her finish through the announce desk as we went off the air. It's a, I'm telling you, all the wrestlers should pool their money and buy stock in Home Depot. Because that's, that's, that's where the big money is in wrestling these days, buying the fucking furniture. That's how they should end their last episode on Fox. Someone goes to do something on the table and they hit the other guy with the move and they both just fall into a hole, like an endless hole. <laughs> Shouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> Journey to the center of the earth. <laughs> I, w I would love to see them get one of those, the, the, the D'Lo Brown and Balls Mahoney, Boo Bradley table. I've told you that story, right? I don't remember. In Johnson City and Freedom Hall, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, Boo Bradley has become a baby face. D'Lo Brown is, is a heel. They're going to have a match. It's, it's a grudge, whatever the fuck. They want to get a little wild. They said, can we break the table? The announce, uh, announcer table at ringside. I said, no, you can't. You can't break that table. I didn't know that I needed to go into detail because that was back when the booker's instructions were not the booker's suggestions. But they got fucking feeling froggy and really going with a street fight match or whatever. And they decided they, they were going to break the table because they had this spot. I didn't tell them that they couldn't break the table because I was refusing to give them permission to break the table. I was telling them that they were not physically capable. It was not humanly possible to break the table that Freedom Hall and Johnson City had as the announce table at ringside because it was one of those spring-loaded fucking tables that folds up in the middle. And when you folded it from the middle out, the biggest support was in the middle underneath it, and then the legs were attached to that, and you could run a fucking giant big rig 18-wheeler across this thing, and it would not break, right? So I'm trying to... I'm pretty sure it was D'Lo was slammed on the the goddamn table and boo goes up on the ropes and he's 325 pounds and he's going to give the big diving headbutt or the big splash or whatever. And he comes off and we taped it. He comes off that goddamn deal and fucking landed on D low. And it was like two fucking trout fillets laying on a landing on a goddamn cast iron frying pan, just like that. And it nearly killed them both. And a table didn't fucking budge. And then they came back and I said, I told you you couldn't break that table. So we thought you meant that we weren't supposed to. The best table spot I ever saw live was probably when uh, Tracy Smothers and Tom Pritchard at Knoxville, the pile driver through the table. Yes. The way the table broke was amazing. Well, and that was completely ad lib too, because the the way the the spot to break the table in the, again... The big show, the biggest house that we drew that year, anywhere, it was fucking 40 grand, the house or whatever. And it's the dirty white boy and Tracy Smothers against the heavily bodies who have just returned in his fucking wild ass crazy Southern match. And Tracy was going to backdrop Tom and Tom was going to go through the fucking table. But when he backdropped him and Tom, he took the bump and kind of rolling and the table didn't break. So, fuck, it looked kind of stupid. It was kind of, people were like, eh. So I whispered at him as he came over. I said, I said, break the fucking thing. So he grabs Tracy and tells Tracy, give, him, give me a pile driver. So Tracy gets him up. And again, this was not the classic 
table that they sell at Home Depot now that you see being broken at ringside, you know, in all these wrestling programs where it's got the fold-out legs and the fucking particle board top. This was an old table. They must have bought 5,000 of these tables in Knoxville at the Coliseum back in 1974, and we, we broke one about every two or three shows, and they never ran out of them. It wasn't for mica, the top of the table. It was some old, like, particle board, like a really stiff ceiling tile. And when Tracy gave him the pile driver, instead of breaking in half, a hole just broke underneath him, and they went straight through the fucking table without the table breaking, and to the point where Tracy was folded up like a jackknife with Tom's legs stuck up in the air, and their ass, and Tom's head and Tracy's ass were stuck in the hole in the table. It looked so incredible live because where we were sitting was on the opposite side of the ring, like the first row of the balcony. And you just see them and then they just go and the table's still there. You're like, what just happened? Yeah, they just went, <laughs> like the elevator dropped out. Boom. And the table is still standing all around them and they're buried in the middle of it. But none of that happened on SmackDown. No, we had more fun no. with table talk we, with this week than we did with SmackDown. <laughs> Well, you know, and that's the, the thing is, table talk, it's talk, and it's about tables, but you can talk about anything you want to talk about, folks, as long as you're listening to something you enjoy, what difference does it make what the subject is? That's right. That's right. That's why you love to listen to these programs, because we give you all kinds of topics. That's right. All kinds of subjects. And the best way in the whole wide world to listen to one of these programs is on our friends at Raycon's wireless earbuds. And have you heard about this? The early Black Friday sale going on now, Brian. I did not. I Early Black, is it gray? You you heard about this. I told you about it fucking three days ago. We did the last program. Oh, was that you? But you don't listen to me anymore. You never listen. Folks, it's up to 50% off at the early Black Friday sale, which is a shade That's of right. gray. Code name you Cobra, right? right? Code name Cobra. You don't have to worry about being trampled like cattle. You don't have to worry about being mutilated like cattle. You don't have to worry about being milked like cattle. Because all you got to do is in the privacy of, well, there's a lot of things happen to cattle these days. Apparently. In the privacy of your own home, you can go to buyraycon.com and you can fill out your Christmas list for yourself or for your significant other for your loved ones family members anybody that wants to hear voices or even potentially music in their own head you can program people's minds ladies and gentlemen with no, the raycon no. everyday wireless earbuds no repetition that, is the key you can't program their minds you can program some fine tunes that'll be played and some snappy if talk. you rec if you record your voice saying i want you to want me the way that i want you the way that it could be baby i'd love you to want me and they just hear it over and over <laughs> i don't know if they hear you doing that they're gonna think anything other than how do i get these out of my ear baby i'd love oh. you to want me <laughs> the way that i want you the way that it could be baby I'd love you to want me. See, if you just hear that over and over, it trains these people. Stick these earbuds in a girl you want to get with. Stick them in her ears while she's asleep at night. If you have to crawl in the wind and do what you got to do, and then let her hear that over and over while she's asleep, George is the guy. George is the guy. George. I want to blow George. Shit like that. <laughs> and you will be able to train... People I don't I don't think we should be teaching or preaching to people that they should be using this for some level of hypnosis that they could somehow just do to people. Would you suggest sneak into someone's house? Train people. Just a subliminal. I didn't say sneak in a house. I said crawl in the window. Now, there's a difference. Are it's you saying subtle, you could train people there. or that? The train can, people are going to be sneaking into your house. No, well, you can train people to sneak into houses on behalf of you for other people, or no. you can just train people to do your bidding. Or you could do perfectly, perfect, I can't even talk, you could do perfectly legal things like listen to music and snappy talk. Well, yes, like that, Raycon is a great company. It's multiple companies now. They launched Raycon Home and Raycon Power Tech. They've got... That magic 180 cable that charges all the IOs and the micro USBs and the Type Cs. USBs. And 
They've got the faucet filter that ultra filters the water in your tap against chlorine and heavy metal. That's, that's not what it does. It has nothing to do with water filtration no, or water softening. No, the faucet, the faucet filter ultra filters the water, and that's the faucet filter that comes from Raycon Home, and it it ultra filters the water in your tap against chlorine and heavy metal. That's exactly what it says. What what it's got against Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin and other groups, I have no idea, but it's going to filter that stuff out. Because you're using this water to wash your face and brush oh, your teeth. It really does say that. This is a real yes. thing you're talking about. Well, what, you think I'd lie? You just make up all sorts of shit. I never know what you're saying on I these things. I didn't say the earbuds would filter the water. You, you can't do that. I'll tell you right now, don't try to filter your water with the earbuds. Because all you'll get is soggy earlobes. But folks, whatever you want. You want to listen to fine earbuds. You want to drink clean water. You want to charge up various shit you can plug into the Magic 180 cable with. They've got all kinds of things to make your life easier over at Buy Raycon, B-U-I-R-A-Y-C-O-N, buyraycon.com. And right now, with the early Black Friday sale, which is getting a darker gray as we speak and is headed toward full blackout potential, it's going on right now up to 50% off. Up to 50% off. There's all kinds of different discounts. There's 20%, there's 30, 40, even 50% on these various products. You got to jump in now. Great gifts. It's, that's right, stocking stuffers. I'll tell you what, you take a pair of these earbuds and you stick them in a woman's stocking, boy, it's only going to take her a second to notice that they're there and she's going to jump and turn around and say, what the fuck did you just shove in my crotch? And then she'll see their she, Raycon what? wireless no, earbuds in no, her stockings. No, 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 And she'll pull them out. No. And she'll say, well, these go in my ears. But thank you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think any of that is the way that would go down if any of that preposterous scenario actually happened. But well, it depends every, on the woman. Every idea you have is like out of a movie from the 80s, from the early 80s, the very early well, 80s. Well, it's almost the late 70s. It's so early. But you can do all these things, folks, with the fine products that you find at buyraycon.com. Slash JCE is how you're going to get that discount, by the way. Use that slash JCE. 20 to 50% off buyraycon.com slash JCE. Get 20 to 50% off the Raycon products. Many things that you can shove in a woman's undergarments for Christmas this year. No, you could put it. Where you put your gifts. Where the and sun don't shine. But that's that's a that's a lousy way to look at it. Instead, shove it in mom's stocking. Once again, what's that promo code, Jim? Slash JCE. Does that count as a promo code or is that a slash? Well, buyraycon.com. You need to get it. Buyraycon. Well, that's not a promo code. That's a website. Buyraycon.com is the website. Slash JCE is how you get the money off, and it's up to you to pick what you want to shove into mom's undergarments. Well, Brian, what in the wide, wide world of sports are you doing over at the Arcadian Vanguard Network this fine week? Another action-packed oh. week on the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network. Get information about all the shows on Twitter at Super Podcast or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Arcadian Vanguard. Of course, the wrestling news every day. Get your wrestling news for free. Get it directly from the wrestlingnews.com or wherever you find your favorite podcast. Look for Arcadian Vanguard's The Wrestling News for your free daily wrestling newscast. No opinion, no conjecture, just the wrestling news. Also want to make mention, stick to wrestling with John McAdam. They continue their look at the fall of 1983 WWF the fall before the rise of 1984 WWF, hear it today at mcadampod.com or look for Stick to Wrestling with John McAdam wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And of course, the 605 Super Podcast, The Mothership! No one's home. I gave a full-throated one that time. Go through the archive, 605pod.com, available wherever you find your favorite podcast, The Mothership. <laughs> I don't know about full-throated, but if you do that again, I'll squeeze your britches full. Good heavens. Yeah. The slide whistle there. Where, by the oh, way, no. is there a place a different? Whistle. What are you saying? I said, that's not a slide whistle. This is. <whistles> that's a slide whistle. Ah, uh, thank you for clarifying that.
I've all is sorts there of a whistles. different place that you go to find podcasts you don't like than the place you go to find your favorite podcasts? Uh, no, unless someone's like an idiot and they don't know how to get their shit distributed, and there's plenty of free places to do that even, I think. But I think there should be a special place for all the podcasts that everybody thinks sucks, and that way you could plug it, and you could say, go to the place you go to for all the podcasts you think suck. Well, I wouldn't be saying that about my shows, so I wouldn't be plugging any shows that... Well, no, but that would keep those people out of your shows. If you they like shows that the suck, that sucks. go to showsuck.com. Yeah, there you go. Copyright that. Apply for that domain, showsthatsuck.com. <laughs> we could fill that son of a bitch up. Today alone. Today alone. All right. All right.